From the moment I was born, I wanted to explore the world. As a child, I was always discovering something new. When I got my first set of wheels, I learned something about myself. I was born to ride. Let's get off the pavement and check out some of the dirt roads. I continued on my way wondering how I was going to fix my bike. What the f is that buzzing? Is it this? When an unlikely solution presented itself in the form of a stranger walking on the side of the road. The place I'm staying at has all these deer statues. So when I came out of my room and I saw these guys, I was like, wait a minute, are those statues? No, wait, they're moving. <laughs> okay, another day in the saddle. As you can see, the bike is pretty damp. Ooh, that's soaking wet. I don't want to sit on that. <laughs> Let's uh, get this thing started. Wyoming is the 10th largest state in America but with a population of just over half a million, it is also the least populated state. It's the perfect place for an introvert who likes riding alone. My route through Wyoming would take me from the south to the north along a series of paved and gravel roads. And given the issues that I've had in Moab and Colorado, I'm really crossing my fingers that nothing goes wrong in Wyoming. There's the sun, look at that. Oh my God, I gotta stop and take a look at that. Oh my God. Look how green everything is here. You can see it's starting to change to yellow. Oh, so cold. The sunrise coming over the horizon was just absolutely stunning and I had to stop and take a picture and say hi to these friendly horses. Hey, there you go. Oh, hey, pet you too. Oh so soft oh. I'll see you later yeah okay bye guys soon enough it was time to get off the pavement and hit the dirt Due to how sparse Wyoming is, they have this huge network of dirt roads that crisscross the state with these really interesting roadside information plaques. From here you can see three different mountain ranges. Direction in front of you is the Magnuson Wind River Range. I guess it's that one right there. To the far left is the Wyoming Range. I don't see anything. You can see the Unita U U huh? Range. <laughs> I don't see any mountain ranges here, Wyoming. All I see is a lot of flat area with a big giant rock thingy right there. Given how flat the surrounding area was, I was surprised to see this lone rock formation sticking up in the middle of nowhere. And since it didn't look that far away, I decided to go check it out. I want to see that giant rock thingy sticking out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I thought this was the way to go to it, but I could be wrong. Where am I? That's it there. So... 1.8 kilometers or two kilometers okay oh man i don't want to get stuck in some sand or something i should try it it's pretty dry out here though okay let me go like a few feet in and see what i can do my big ass heavy cases on my bike oh, oh can i do this is this a stupid idea I don't know, we'll find out I guess. Come on, come on, adventure bike. Oh, oh, oh okay, 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 I gotta pay attention. I gotta seriously pay attention. If I get stuck in sand, I'm screwed. Oh, coming up on a water crossing. Coming up on a, you know what? I better actually slow down because that could be mud. That could be, whoa, whoa, ah, oh, shit, damn it, oh no. Oh, I gotta turn my bike off. Oh, I turned off. Ah. Okay. 
I was just joking to say that was a water crossing, but you know what? That's pretty. Oh, that's pretty muddy. I, I, I turned my bike off. That's pretty muddy. Yep, those tires are not going to go through that. Okay. Let's see if I can lift this bike. I don't know where to grab it. Okay, okay. Shit. It's sliding. When I push back, it slides in the mud. Uh oh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Here we go. Is the kickstand on this side? Oh, shit. It's on the other side. Oh, I should have put the kickstand down first. Oh, that was kind of stupid. Holy crap. Look at this mud. Oh, my God. It's like glue. Can I get through here? I can't go back. I have to go forward. I have... Oh, shit. Okay. Okay, that was stupid. I was gonna show you how it's like... Oh shit, that's heavy. Damn. Oh, stupid. Oh. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Okay. Okay. Shit, what should I do? I don't think I can get in there. Because... Well, I made it that far. Shit, it won't start with the kickstand. <laughs> Holy crap. This was stupid. I gotta wash my bike after this is covered in mud. What if I put this rock down by the tire? Can it get a little bit of traction on this tire? Is that gonna... Is that gonna be dumb? I don't know. Come on! Oh, come. Ah. There we go! Come on! Come on! Oh. Oh my god, that was the hardest thing I think I've ever done on this bike. Oh. You butthole! Holy crap, look at my shoes, my boots, look at my face, look at every tire! <laughs> yeah, that's a slick. I gotta wash my bike after this, I don't know where to wash it. I'm going to Atlantic City, there's no place to wash it there. Okay. Despite the challenge of the mud hole, I was determined to make my way to the rock thingy. I continued following the dotted lines of the map, but didn't seem to be getting any closer when suddenly the tracks just disappeared. Where's the trail? Oh, it's to the left. Okay, this is stupid. I need to take a break. I need to take a break. Oh my God, I'm sweating like crazy. I'm so hot. Oh, that feels so good. Oh, that feels so good. Okay, so I am here and the dotted line is over there. So somehow I guess I must have missed it somehow, but there's a bit of a trail here. So I basically need to point this arrow towards that red line. I want to go towards that red line. Not wanting to push my luck any further, I decided that the safe choice was to turn back and head towards the main road. Hmm. I don't seem to be getting any closer to the road. In fact, I seem to be going the wrong way. You know what? I should go back because at least I know how to get back. Oh, this is it. This is it. This is it. Okay. Okay. So, how am I going to do this? First, I think I'll go. Jesus Christ, there's a big hole there. Why is there a giant hole right there? Holy crap. Okay. I'm going to go on the right side. First, right side. But that looks awfully squishy too, doesn't it? Let's walk it. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's, let's just let's just see what happens. Okay. If I can get to here, I think this will be okay. How do I get to here? Oh, maybe right there. That line right down the side there. Stay out of that, stay in that, I think. Okay, let me try. Just to slowly creep in, creep in. Oh, stupid bush, get out of my way. 
Oh shit, my foot is slipping. There we go. Oh yeah! Oh, woohoo! Oh, I made it! Oh god, how long did that take me? 30 seconds, maybe less? It took me like, what, an hour on the other side? <laughs> Note to self, avoid the side that has lots of mud on it. Oh, gravel road! I've never been so happy to see a gravel road in my entire life. Ah, oh, gravel road! It turns out that that rock thingy is called a boar's tusk, which is a cool ass name by the way, and it's the remnants of an old volcano. Heavily eroded now, all that remains is the erosion resistant center core that dates back to over two and a half million years. It's actually a popular landmark for local hikers and climbers, and you can actually drive up to it and climb it if you want. Just make sure you know where you're going and you avoid the mud holes. Can you see it? That's highway. Needing to clean off the bike and reorient myself, I looked on Google Maps for anything that resembled civilization and saw that I was close to the town of Farson. This is Farson. Uh, that's Farson. If I zoom in, I mean, that's it. There's the mercantile, and that's it. There's not even a gas station or anything around here. Now, Farson turned out to be less of a town and more of just an intersection. But with the local mercantile making sandwiches, I knew that it was a perfect place for me to stop for lunch. Thank you very much. Is that very nice lady inside? Oh my God, this is the tourist center as well. So this basically is Farson. This building is Farson. It's a mercantile tourist center. Now, motorcycle car wash. She said, that I could use her hose back here to rinse off my bike. Great, we have water. Okay, let's get some hose action. According to a government census done in 2010, Atlantic City had a population of 37 residents. Clearly, they have experienced a population boom since then. Welcome to Atlantic City. Population 57. Population 58 for tonight. Atlantic City is a popular stopping point for hikers and cyclists who are following the Continental Divide Trail. I met Mike Gribble, who is one of the brave cyclists following the 3,000 mile route that stretches across the United States from the border of Canada to Mexico. And if that wasn't challenging enough, Clay Jacobson decided that he wanted to hike the entire distance. We joked over breakfast that I'd be comfortably back home in Canada before he'd even hit the halfway mark on his trip. He shared with me some of the amazing photos that he has on his Instagram and I wish him Godspeed on his journey. Oh, okay. I guess I'm staying in one of these cabins. The Miner's Delight Inn has become a favorite rest stop for ADV riders after the opening of the Wyoming BDR route, and I was happy to hunker down for the night in one of their cozy cabins. After a hearty breakfast, I was back on the road and onto the highway this time as my route took me through the Teton and Yellowstone National Parks. What a cool little B&B that is. Today is just easy, easy, easy day. Grinding out the miles, hoping nothing breaks. It's really a shame that the GoPro doesn't show scale well, doesn't show distance well, because you just cannot appreciate the scale of this area when you're looking at it from a GoPro. I mean, I just had to stop here and look at this. As far as my eyeball can see, that's Wyoming. That way, that way, and that way. And that way too, but there's a mountain in the way. Look at this place. It's just so vast, so vast.
Yellowstone National Park may be world famous, but with the amount of traffic and construction that was going on, it was a jarring contrast to the peaceful and isolated roads that I'd just ridden. Not wanting to spend my day stuck behind a line of cars, I got the token photo of the sleepy American bison and left the park as quickly as I could. A large part of the lore of the American Wild West can be attributed to William Frederick Cody, also known as Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill was a cowboy, soldier, and showman who founded the Wild West show that featured sharpshooting, rope tricks, buffalo hunting, and reenactments of historical American events. His show toured throughout America and Europe and was immensely popular in bringing the frontier life to a global audience. His romantic images of the Wild West would shape Hollywood cowboy movies for decades to come. I wonder what he'd think of a modern cowboy movie. I bet he would love Tombstone with Val Kilmer because everybody loves that movie. While on a trip to Yellowstone, Cody was so impressed with the area that he decided to start a town named after himself, of course. Today, Cody, Wyoming is a growing town and home to the Buffalo Bill Center of the West, a massive, massive complex that is home to five distinct museums. Founded in 1917 to preserve the legacy of William Cody, the center contains the Buffalo Bill Museum, the Plains Indian Museum, the Whitney Western Art Museum, the Draper Natural History Museum, and the Cody Firearms Museum. I'm telling y'all, this place is huge. After a few practice rounds at the museum, I felt that I was ready to test my cowboy sharpshooting skills at the Cody Firearms Experience. My instructor for the day was Matthew and I could immediately tell that he was very knowledgeable about guns due to the length of his beard and the fact that he was wearing a sheriff's badge. I had a lot of fun shooting a variety of guns from different eras, starting with the 1860 Henry rifle, then a World War II era M1 Garand. That's fun. Here we go. Last one. Get ready for the ping. <laughs> no, I definitely want one. And then finally, a modern FNP-90. I really felt that I was getting closer to my cowboy dreams. Do I look like Clint Eastwood yet? Uh, <laughs> Not I yet. I mean, I think you're about a foot shorter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Of course, I couldn't leave without having a go at firing the Gatling gun. and giving the shop dog some pets. Aren't you adorable? Little beagle. Oh my God, that was so much fun. As I rode out of Cody and into the mountains, I reflected on how much I enjoyed my time in Wyoming. The vast open spaces, friendly people, and historical ties to the founding of America all gave Wyoming that distinctive feel of the fabled land of the free. As I made my way out of Montana and into Idaho, I had one last road that I wanted to ride. That's right y'all, 150 miles of twisty mountain road. Doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> 